Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Crypt of the Necrodancer, a roguelike-like dungeon crawler that is inevitably going to put my rat my lack of rhythm uh, on full display here. Now we're going to do a little bit of talking before we really get into the game, uh, because this is a game that, you know, it's musical uh, down to its core, so it is going to require me to focus on kind of the beat of the music that's going on in the background, the quite excellent music I might add, but let's talk a little bit uh, about the game itself right here before my commentary becomes completely disjointed and ADHD as a result of me trying to focus on two different things at once. This is uh, obviously a play on something like Crypt of the Necromancer, but instead it's a rhythm-based roguelike-like, uh, kind of like something like The Binding of Isaac, but not really, it's turn-based, so it's more like something like Sword of the Stars, The Pit, or Dungeons of Dreadmore. It's being developed by a Vancouver-based team, so I always have a preference for local games, because what can I say, I am a biased piece of garbage. Uh, but this is a lot of fun, I, I saw Josh play it on his 52-hour live stream. I know Red Panda Gamer's been playing it as well, so I figured, you know what, uh, I'll take the opportunity to play it as well. And the exciting news uh, that just immediately came out about Crypt of the Necrodancer is that Clay Entertainment, the guys behind Don't Starve, Mark of the Ninja, uh, Shank and Shank 2, etc., etc., uh, are now going to be offering publishing support with indie fund like terms, which you can look up if you're interested, uh, as well as design help. So I'm very in interested to see where this goes and where it's going to come out and how it's going to look when it actually comes out, because this is indeed a pre alpha build. Without further ado, let's get started. And I will explain what the hell is going on in this game. I apologize if you can see my mouse pointer, by the way. Basically, we have spawned inside of this dungeon here, and you can see that there is that heartbeat down at the bottom, uh, and also some, like, vertical lines that are scrolling in towards it. Those basically represent the beat. Now, this is a turn-based dungeon crawler, or roguelike, and uh, as mentioned, or as you might expect, uh, you have to move in time with the beat. All of your actions have to be in time with the beat, so let me just feel this for a second. Okay, so we've got some good movement here. Now, I'm hoping that I managed to figure out, uh, or managed to just kind of internalize this. You'll see if I miss, by the way. Uh, and the way that it works is essentially, man, Red Panda Gamer was right, this is impossible to talk and, uh, play at exactly the same time. But essentially, um, this is a, a turn-based roguelike, and you have very simplistic actions, which makes sense kind of given the structure of the game. So I'm, I'm gonna crank up the sound here one second. Hopefully you can't hear that through the, uh, microphone bleeding through, but anyway, you can move, and the way that you uh, attack is just by moving into enemies, essentially. And after you kill an enemy, let's see if we can get uh, an example of that here. You can see that the floor changes color. Essentially what that does is uh, indicate that you have a score multiplier. So your main goal is to get as far as possible, but also uh, amass as much gold as possible so that you can upgrade your character. It does have kind of like a rogue legacy style uh, permanent upgrade system. Now, we are going to get new equipment as we move through here, by the way. Now, I have to stress, I might be talking over the music, so you might not be able to hear it too well, but the music in this game is absolutely fantastic. Uh, even in the game's early state, I don't know how far along the music is, uh, but even if not that far, uh, it's fantastic. And if it's, like, basically feature complete, it's also great as well. Now, we start with some very simplistic kind of uh, inventory items here. By the way, I apologize for the fact that I continually lose my multiplier. Expect that to happen uh, ad nauseum throughout this. Uh, we started with a standard sword, uh, but we also picked up a broad sword, and what that allows us to do is kind of attack in a wider range. Uh, interface, pretty simplistic here, as you can probably guess. Uh, we have 53 coins, 6 gems. Gems are the uh, currency that we are going to use uh, outside of the game. Like the, Your gems are consistent. This is not like a free-to-play mechanic where you get gold in the game and use that gold to buy gems or something like that, or use hard-earned American dollars to buy gems. Uh, you usually pick up a gem when you complete each floor. Let's see if we can buy new items here. We also have a shovel, and I can use that shovel to look for secret rooms, uh, and there's items that I can get that will make those secret rooms uh, easier to find. But anyway, let's buy this. I don't know what this is, actually. My guess is that that probably gives us a little bit of armor. Now, after you kill an enemy, it does uh, trigger that, like, get in the groove style disco floor uh, that is lit up. And the way that you continue with that is to always move on every single se sequential or consecutive beat that comes after that. And I feel like I'm starting to do a little bit better now. But again, this is going to be something that's going to be very hard to talk and play at the same time. If you thought it was tough to play something like, you know, Rock Band Blitz or Symphony and uh, play it or talk about it at the same time, I accidentally hit a, uh, a trap door there. So anyway, the, like Isaac or Dungeons of Dreadmore, you know, the whole point of each floor is just to get down to the next floor that is uh, beneath it. Sometimes that'll happen via trap doors and sometimes that'll happen via a deliberate staircase, which most of the time seems to be preferable. That was like a boo there. Um, most of the time it seems to be preferable to use a staircase because you actually have the opportunity to get a gem. Now, I've never fallen into the water, so I don't know what kind of negativity that would entail for us. I would rather not find out. We have uh, received another piece of armor here. I don't really know what this is going to do for us. There's another trap door, which we could immediately use to go down to the next floor, but that's kind of a waste because we want to get treasure, you know? It's not just trying to survive till the end. 
Uh, it's also trying to uh, get as much treasure as possible. So you can buy kind of upgrades that are permanent for yourself, uh, like extra HP. Normally when you start Crypt of the Necrodancer, you only have uh, f two hearts. I was going to say four, but that is exactly the opposite, actually. Um, you normally only have two hearts, uh, but I bought a passive upgrade. Oh, God! I, I'm gonna die. Yes, I died to the uh, dragon there. Yeah, but yes, let, let me explain the hub world now because we'll actually be back here. Basically, uh, here you can buy permanent upgrades like this heart, for example, but it's gonna cost 10 gems, uh, and we only have six of those right now. It's worth noting, by the way, you can only move with the beat. I guess I can't unlock these at all yet. Uh, so if I just like hold down the button, it's not gonna work out well for me at all. Now, it's worth noting in this pre alpha build, uh, there is only zone one. Zone 2, 3, 4, and Hardcore Mode are not accessible. Uh, those are still in development as far as I am aware. But Zone 1 does have a very interesting boss fight at the end of it. I would love to be able to get to it. I've been to it once. It's basically just like a huge rhythm-based uh, boss fight with a sizable horde of enemies. But I don't think we're going to be able to get to it because I'm playing really badly. Kind of by virtue of the fact that I'm trying to talk and play the game at the same time. Which is more difficult than you might expect. If I was going to do like a stream of this, it would basically be pure silence. Which would be okay. Because you would hear the, again, fantastic soundtrack in the background. I really thought that heart on the bottom was a, like, really damaging enemy. Uh, so let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that's how do you get this game, how's it coming out? Uh, as of right now, as far as I know, builds are only available to the press, which is inevitably going to be disappointing to a lot of people, I can understand. It's disappointing for me to not be able to direct you guys to a demo or something like that. Uh, but I'm sure, uh, you know, if only due to the fact that uh, these guys are working with Clay, that there will be some kind of further distribution in general. Those guys are very forward-thinking when it comes to online distribution, so I would expect, uh, you know, some kind of playable build or purchasable game uh, to be available uh, at some point. You know, I'm not going to speculate on a timeline because that would be irresponsible and unfair to the people actually working on the game, uh, but I would expect, you know, at some point fairly soon, you know, maybe end of the year, same time as Binding of Isaac Rebirth, maybe there'll be something available, but I almost hesitate to say that because I wonder if I, you know, basically put words in their mouth. Anyway, we did find the exit to go down to the next floor. Uh, there are some other kind of uh, intangibles that I want to talk about, uh, about Crypt of the Necrodancer that might interest you as well. Uh, this is a game where it is intended, or at least uh, the infrastructure exists, or will exist, for you to play this with your own MP3s, uh, which means you could kind of create your own soundtrack to the game, which would mitigate a little bit of the uh, repetitive nature of the game, because as of right now, uh, every floor does have one song associated with it. I've said before, I like the music a whole lot, but I can understand, you know, after you've played it, you know, maybe 50 times, you don't want to hear that song anymore. Maybe you want to try playing it with, uh, you know, like a an opera in the background or something. Maybe you want to try playing it with uh, Illmatic in the background. Uh, that, as far as I'm aware, uh, is something that is going to be uh, possible and in the cards uh, later on, if it isn't already. I haven't checked myself because, again, you know, copyright issues on YouTube. Uh, additionally, you can actually play this with a, uh, or it's planned again, uh, that you'll be able to play this with a DDR pad, which should be really interesting as well, and I'm sure uh, YouTube will be all over that once it's a little bit more readily available. Okay, let's buy a map. Essentially what the map allows us to do is see a little bit beyond walls, kind of like again in Isaac, and apparently every time I play a roguelike I compare it to Isaac, but uh, in Isaac, uh, you know, there's secret rooms. You can kind of do the same thing here and try to find some secret rooms, that's not it. Uh, but we can see what is in a room before we go in, at least to a certain extent. And the torch is kind of similar. You might have seen that I got the torch on the last run. Oh god, I'm gonna die here. Uh, the torch on the last run kind of allows you to see like one block past the door. So if you get really close to a wall, sometimes you can see uh, if there's a secret room beyond it. Oh, it looks like there's some kind of weird uh, skeleton-y type death room in here that I've never seen before. Uh, and that worries me a great deal. So my multiplier is dying. Again, I'm not sure if I stressed this enough. I think that was like a cracker or something that I just ate that gave me some extra HP. Uh, but yes, once you uh, actually get a multiplier going, which you get by killing an enemy, you need to continue to kill enemies uh, in order to keep that multiplier up. And continue to move on the beat. If you move off of the beat, uh, then your multiplier dies. Which is really frustrating when you're trying to record a video of it at the same time. Through no fault of the game's designers, of course. Uh, what I want to stress above all else, even though this is definitely not MLG play of Crypt of the Necrodancer, uh, is that this game is a ton of fun, and I am very much looking forward to it uh, actually releasing. Let's see if we can get pretty far on this run, though. So there are traps as well. You already saw us land on a trap door. That was just a trap that pushed me forward a little bit. That can really mess up your rhythm, as one might expect. I think there's four floors before the boss fight, and again, as one might expect, the enemies do get a little bit more difficult uh, on each subsequent floor. Uh, and they, enemies uh, have a decent amount of variety as well, like slimes, for example. Uh, oh, that kills us instantly if we step on it, I believe. 
Uh, so, you know, slimes are, are one thing. They're pretty simplistic, the same way they might be in something like a Terraria. Uh, but then you have those zombies. Those zombies are, like, really aggressive, chasing you down, but the green ones actually lose their head when you attack them once. So after you attack them once, they start to run away from you. And also, you know, each run is a little bit different due to the variety of weapons that you have at your disposal as well. Uh, for example, I have the broadsword now. Uh, that in Oh, I need a key to get to the shop now. I've never actually seen a key in the game. Uh, I That seems like a room destined for death due to those traps. Uh, but, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, so I have the broadsword. That increases like my, uh, my range so I can sort of attack enemies diagonally. Uh, if they're near me. Uh, but also, you can get a long sword, which basically hits enemies, uh, like directly in front of you with a little bit higher range. And you can get a, uh, a golden whip. Uh, I can't believe that he killed me there. Let's do one more run. You can get a golden whip that kind of hits enemies in like a radius or an area of effect around you. Hopefully we'll be able to get one of those. You know, the items are a little bit, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say lacking as of right now. Uh, but there's not that many of them, but again, this is a, a pre-alpha build. And of course, uh, not, not to belittle game design or development, but uh, when it comes to adding items to a roguelike, it's not like it takes uh, a substantial amount of creativity for the most part to at least flesh it out a little bit. You know, you got uh, speed upgrades might not be practical here, but something, you know, other weapon upgrades are probably fairly easy to think of, even if just on a superficial graphical level. Again, hopefully that doesn't come across as derisive. I am, again, almost already dead. Because I am apparently terrible at multitasking here. You know, it, it's... I, my theory on this, and I am not a scientist, despite what I may sometimes tell you in my videos, um, is that, you know, speech has a rhythm and a cadence to it all of its own. So, you know, the rhythm centers of your brain, we're definitely going to do another one. They're too busy trying to make sure I keep a good, uh, you know, kind of cadence of dialogue, which is also a great name for uh, a lyrical album, but... Um, the, yeah, my, my brain is too busy focused on one element of, uh, of rhythm to get the second element, uh, the priority that it needs in my brain to kind of make sure that I'm doing okay here. Either that, or I'm bad at multitasking, or uh, maybe I just have no rhythm, as one might expect, given my appearance. But in any case, that wasn't a race thing either. It was more like, I am a nerdy-looking dude. But nerdy-looking dudes sometimes, you know, put them on the dance floor with enough alcohol, and they will do the greatest moves that you have ever seen. Okay, so I'm going to try to live here. Uh, on the first floor, it, it might not seem like it, but there actually is some strategy, especially when dealing with those blue slimes. Uh, because if you get hit by an enemy, it destroys your multiplier as well. Uh, so the way that blue slimes work, at least with the uh, starting weapon, they take two hits to kill. So you want to have them move into you. We got the broadsword again, which is kind of unfortunate because I would have wanted to get a long sword uh, or maybe a uh, golden whip. But anyway, you want to have the uh, enemies move into you, the blue slimes specifically. Uh, so that they don't get a chance to attack because you get to move twice before they get to move once uh, And if they attack you obviously, oh we have ten gems now uh, if they attack you you lose your multiplier Not that I haven't been losing it constantly anyway just from being unable to multitask here But anyway, I, I hope that makes a little bit of sense basically what I'm getting at uh, You know you have to plan your attack even though it might not look like it, it might just look like you're just running into enemies consistently Oh god the dragon I did not realize that the dragon could beat his way out of these walls so we're going to look for the exit as quickly as possible. Uh, but yes, there is some strategy involved in the combat, even though uh, it may not appear so from what you're watching. If you were actually playing it yourself, I assure you, uh, you, you would figure it out sooner rather than later. Alright, so we're... Okay, uh, I'm just going to go for this trap door, because I want to run away from this dragon, essentially. So let's see if we can survive the third floor here. At the very least, uh, it's nice to know that after I leave this floor, uh, I will be able to get the permanent health upgrade. So again, it does have kind of, at least in its current state, a rogue legacy kind of structure, uh, where you don't really start in a pure state. Like, the first run that you have of uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer is going to be different than the runs that you have after you buy those passive upgrades. Uh, so it's not necessarily like Spelunky in that format. Uh, let's uh, hit R to restart, but I just want to go and buy this upgrade instead. So that's probably going to do it for my uh, really cursory let's look at of uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer. I hope you guys have enjoyed this so far. There will be a link to the game's website. You can sign up for the mailing list or follow the uh, developers on social media if you are interested. Uh, it's necrodancer.com, so it's pretty simple to remember. But in any case, this is not out yet, uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing how it develops over the uh, kind of course of its production. In any case, this has been Crypt of the Necrodancer. As always, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for your support, and I will see you next time.